my name is Emma and today I wanted to introduce you to a new and exciting technology called BrainBook. The brain is made up of extremely complex interactions between nerve cells and previous ways of studying the brain can provide global methods for visualizing brain activity and, you know, general patterns for how these interactions occur. But BrainBow actually provides a way to zero in on what's actually happening between the cells. Think of the brain like a piece of fabric. All of the nerves weave and interact together to create all of the activity of our brains. If the fabric is all one color, like this apron I have here, it gets kind of difficult to see each crossover and how each thread contributes to the fabric as a whole. But what happens if we dye each of our threads a different color? It becomes much easier to observe the individual threads in our fabric and find trends for how they're woven. And Brainbow does just that with nerve cells. A combination of many technologies made the Brainbow system possible. Specifically, the lock screen recombinatory system and accessibility to many different colored fluorescent proteins. The lock screen technology allows these fluorescent proteins to mix and match in different combinations to create cells that fluoresce a little differently from the cells next to them. Sometimes coloring our threads with only one fluorescent protein and sometimes coloring them with different combinations of fluorescence. In this way, we're able to determine how these cells interact with each other. So far, Brainbow has been used in mice and flies, but there's even cool research using Brainbow in plants. It's mostly been optimizing the Brainbow system for different kinds of nerve cells and different areas of the brains. So, Dumas et al. used Brainbow to specifically color oligodendrocytes, which are important support cells for the nervous system. And Zadie et al. recently used this technology to understand taste bud growth and innervation in mice. So essentially, like kind of figuring out how the taste buds do their thing and how they communicate that back to the brain. Finally, Washman et al. were able to study the retinoblastoma related gene, which is a cancer related gene in humans through using what they're calling brother of brainbow technology in the model organism Arabidopsis, which is a flowering plant. Mostly the research so far has been geared to optimizing brainbow, but there are some really cool applications that have yet to be tried. Further research could look at the development of the retina in, in the same way that the papers were looking at the taste buds, see how the nerves in our retinas communicate back to the brain and see what we can find. There's also the possibility of looking at how the brain responds to certain kinds of stimuli, like when we taste something really good, how does that affect our brain? And when we see something cute, like a kitten, how does our brain respond to that and maybe reshape itself? I hope this video has been informative. The sources for the information included in this video are on screen and in the description, and I encourage you to check them out. Thank you all for watching. Please enjoy this wonderful piece of artwork by Dr. Rajendran, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hi. <laughs> you gotta sit, you gotta sit. Okay? <laughs> Or not. <laughs> go, 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 go. Wonderful.